Hi, my name is Gene and I'm a partner at Google Capital. Today I'm visiting the offices of MapR, one of Google Capital's portfolio companies. I'll be speaking to John Schroeder, who's the CEO at MapR. John, thank you very much for being here. And we'd love to hear a little bit about your background and what uh, what brought you here today. Well, I was born in Chicago, and uh, but I moved out to California in 1979. So my blood thinned out. I, I think it's cold when it's about 50 degrees out. Prior to starting MapR, I'd done three technology startups, and um, they've all turned out well. One one resulted in a public company called Brio Technology in the business intelligence space, and. The two others were acquired by Microsoft and EMC, and, and after those exits, I had a little bit of time to goof around. On one of those breaks, I took up aerobatics uh, flying as a pilot, and that's where you're, you're doing maneuvers, right? So you do loops and rolls and the hammerheads where the plane goes straight at the sky and then falls off. You know, when I tell you that, you're probably thinking, oh, John's a, a daredevil or a thrill seeker. When he was a kid, he was probably jumping off the roof of the house. It had occurred to me. Yeah, yeah, driving his parents crazy, and I'm actually a very conservative guy. It's kind of the same thing about technology startups. If you do the same sort of things to prepare, you prepare yourself, your own skills, get the right resources, surround yourself with the right team, well, you can really make a relatively risky sort of startup endeavor pretty safe. And so I've been fortunate you know, three times and MapR is off to a great start. There's obviously some you know, memories we have of those first days in the first office. The house air conditioning wasn't strong enough, so I know I went on uh, Craigslist and found a movement cool. And what movement cools look like is uh, they look like a space robot. So they're like a big box, but the the uh, ducting comes out like arms, and they're uh, you're able to redirect them. So it looks like kind of a. a, a a space uh, robot from like 1950 or 60 sci-fi movie. The engineers, uh, they all called it old, old faithful because about once an hour in the in the lunchroom, this thing would start spurting and spitting water all over the place like a geyser. We're much more sophisticated now. We're in a 90,000 foot facility. We've got massive data center space. MapR is at the center of big data and we've got the technology leading distribution for Apache Hadoop in the marketplace and we've got over 700 customers, uh, which is more than anybody in our space. We're up to around 330 employees so far. Uh, company's grown like crazy. We've doubled uh, bookings and revenue year to year this year, and uh, it's a it's a it's a software subscription model. So. Our, we, we have high gross margin products. It's definitely a land grab out there, but you want to grab the land you want, right? So you don't want the swamp properties, you want downtown Manhattan. So the high value customers are where we really focus our growth efforts. And I am really fortunate to have just top tier investors at, uh, at every, every financing we've added another really uh, strong asset. But Google Capital is unique as far as you bring much more operational assistance to the company than my venture investors. I've given presentations and I've said, you know, why did I build the product like this? And I'll say, uh, well, well, the first thing I asked is myself is what would Google do? If they were presented with this situation, what would Google do? Because they're kind of the bellwether on what the rest of the industry is going to be doing five, ten years later. John, along the way in your career, what's been some of the best or worst advice that you've gotten along the way from, from mentors and other folks? I think best advice is uh, how to manage capital. You know, you, you know, if you've been doing this, I've been in startups since 1995, so we've been through booms and busts a couple times. And I've gotten good advice about when to conserve and, and when to raise. And uh, certainly when capital's available, you should take advantage of it. Um, but you should also sock some away and make sure that if there is a bust period, if you have a, a drier period where capital isn't as available, you can operate your company with a lot of headroom. Really instructive, John, and thank you so much for taking the time today. All right, Gene, it's always good to see you. Thank you. <laughs>